What is up, my friends? You are very welcome along to our Europa League quarterfinal second leg preview here on Anfield Agenda. The Reds travel over to Bergamo to take on Atalanta. We are 3 0 down after the first leg. I'm sure you're already aware of that. And the miracle of Bergamo is what's going to be required for the Reds to book their place in the semi final. Can we do it? I don't know, but we'll give it a go. Do we have form of going over there and getting wins? Yes, and we'll go through that in a moment. But for right now, I'm going to ask you guys, as always, when you watch the video, let us know your thoughts on my predicted 11, my score prediction, and any other thoughts you have ahead of the game. Drop a like on the video if you enjoy it. And most importantly, do not forget to hit that subscribe button. So look, let's start off with some injury updates ahead of the game. The good news is we pretty much have everybody back that we need back at this moment. Trent is available for the game. Obviously, Alisson is back in goal as well. Jones has returned. Jota has returned. So it's only really long-term absentees at this point. And Stefan by Cechic that we're still un, uh, unsure of. By Cechic, I don't think we'll get minutes in this game. You may see him traveling in the squad, but I haven't included him in my predicted 11. So I'm going to get stuck into it and start off uh, actually do you know what before we do the score prediction a bit of a new segment here to the previews we're going to have a look at our head-to-heads and our previous histories with Atlanta so let me just bring this up on the screen there you go as you can see our last two head-to-head -head games with Atlanta we took them on in the Champions League group stage where we were beaten 2-0 at home as you can see on the bottom one there 25th of November 2020 beaten at home 2-0 but we had already gone over there and trounced them 5-0 and that gives me a little bit of hope or optimism so we have form for going over there and scoring a load of goals but can we do it now that remains to be seen have a quick look at Atalanta's recent form here as well you can see that they drew 2-2 against Verona yesterday in the Serie A they also beat us 3-0 in the Europa League. 7th of April, they lost 2-1 away to Cagliari. Uh, and they also lost to Fiorentina 1-0 on the 3rd of April. And they beat Napoli in Napoli 3-0. Hmm, seems like they have form for going and winning 3-0 away from home. So, as you can see... Bit of a mixed bag for Napoli with their recent history. So don't give up all hope that we can go over there and get the job done. I get it. Sometimes this is just us being rose-tinted glass wearing uh, Liverpool fans. But we have to believe. And with that in mind, let's start off with the score prediction. What have I gone for? 4-1. And us to go all the way to extra time and penalties. Now, I say this with not much conviction. More hope than anything. But I have to. I have to predict that we can get the job done. So, I'm going to say we will concede. But we score four. And I don't know what happens after that. Extra time and penalties. And fingers crossed we can book our place in the semis. But I'm being optimistic. I'm putting my best foot forward. Now... Who's going to get the job done on the pitch? Well, this is probably going to be where we disagree on a lot of things. I've left out some big names. I'm going to explain my reasoning as we go through. But as I said earlier, would love to know your thoughts on it. So let's start off with the goalkeeper and the centre-backs. It is going to be Alison Becker. I'd gotten so into the rhythm of saying Cuevie and Kelleher that I almost said it. But Alison Becker between the sticks. And for me, I'd bring in Jarrell Kwanzaa alongside Virgil van Dijk. Canade deserves to be dropped for this game. And I don't say that lightly, nor will I say it lightly about the other players that I'm going to say need to be dropped for the game. But we can keep rewarding poor performances. We just can't. Canade's future will be absolutely fine. He has the ability, but he hasn't been at his best, nor has our captain. But if I can leave one out, it would be Canade. So I'm going to go for Kwanzaa and Van Dijk. Now, in the fullback positions, as it should be, we've got back to normality. So I've gone with this. Andy Robertson on the left side of the fence and Trent Alexander-Arnold to come back in on the right. It could be one step too early for Trent, but we have to do it. We have to put our best foot forward. And Trent and the ability he has to pick out a pass, to provide an assist and to get forward, I couldn't but put him in, even if he can only do 60, 65 minutes. So that's my back line. Now moving into midfield, this is where the changes really start to come in. So what have I gone for? Alexis McAllister, Dominic Zobosly and Harvey Elliott. I'm not dropping Endo for the sake of dropping Endo. I just want us to be more on the front foot here and try to pen Atlanta in. And I think Alexis McAllister can do that from that position and get forward if needs be. Dominic Zobosly, look, 
He has a lot to answer for as well. His form has been up and down recently, but I got to get belief in him and I got to put the people that I think can make a difference in there. So even again, like Trent, if we can only get 60 minutes, then if we look to bring on Jones or Gravenberg, so be it. Harvey Elliott, he just deserves a start at this point in his preferred position or in his more natural position under Jurgen Klopp, which is in the advanced midfield role. So midfield for me, McAllister, Sobosly, and Harvey Elliott, are you still with me? Because I know a lot of you right now are probably going, Craig, come on now. You're going to hate me even more so in a moment when I reveal the front three that I go with. Well, if you were on the stream last night, you already know this front three. But for now, let's have a look at it. What have I gone for? In the wide areas, there you go. You can see that right. Yes, I have gone for Lucho on the right-hand side. Not on his preferred left, on the right-hand side. Because... I've dropped Mohamed Salah. So on the left-hand side, I've gone for Cody Gakbo because, again, why not give him a chance to impress in his more preferred position? I think Lucho can do a job on the right. I fully expect Adelante to think they know how we're going to set up and we need to throw a spanner in the works and Klopp needs to get one over and, and their manager. So for me, move Diaz over to the right, put Cody Gakbo on the left and then through the centre, who have I gone for? The Ogo Jota, simple as that. I don't think Mohamed Salah and Darwin Nunes deserve to start the game. Same with Ibrahim Kanade. That's my honest opinions on it. I don't want to keep rewarding players who have not been getting the job done. And more so Darwin Nunes, if I'm being honest. I have a little bit more patience for Mohamed Salah. But I'm not seeing what I want to see from Mo over the last few games. So this is what I would do. Also, I'd like to put it to you guys that... Let's say we're 1-0 up and let's say we're going into the 55, 60 minute mark of the game. Atalanta are starting to tire and then they look over and they see Darwin Nunes and Mohamed Salah warming up to come on. I think that could give us the impetus to change the game if needs be and to push ahead to try and get the winners. So I don't think they deserve to start but they could have a cameo role to come in and make a big difference at the end of the game. The fact that we have a much stronger squad than Atalanta is what I hope will win us this tie. I say hope because, as I said, it's very hard to have any rationale behind my optimism that we can go over there and do it based off the performances we've seen recently. So just to confirm, my Liverpool eleven to take on Atalanta is as follows. Alison Becker in goal. Trent to come back in at right back. Robbo at left back. Uh, Jarrell Kwanzaa alongside Virgil van Dijk in midfield. I've gone for Alexis McAllister, Dominic Soboslai and Harvey Elliott. And up top, Lucho on the right. Gakpo on the left and our best finisher in my opinion Diogo Jota through the middle there you have it my friends now it's over to you let us know your thoughts do you agree or disagree don't forget we will be live from 7pm on Thursday for the watch along so I hope that you can come and join us for that we'll have our usual post-match show uh, player ratings video and social media reaction over on the Anfield and the Clips channel as well and just want to draw your attention again to the bottom right hand corner the tickets for the Belfast and Dublin shows are on sale right now. You can get them at Ticketmaster. Hope to see you guys there on the night. Uh, Belfast is going to be May 31st. It's a Friday night. Dublin's going to be June 2nd, a bank holiday Sunday. Both going to be great shows. We're going to have live music, meet and greets. Uh, plenty to talk about as well. So look forward to seeing you guys there. And if you're watching this earlier on today in the evening, we will be live at half past eight, of course, with tonight's late night agenda. Until then, thank you for your continued support of the channel. Looking forward to reading your thoughts on the game. And fingers crossed we can get the job done. Talk to you soon, my friends. Bye-bye.